Hi, welcome to the Smart Garden. I'm Sally Suit. We're at the Smart Garden at High Caliper Growing headquarters in Oklahoma City, and Jonna's with me here today. Our delightful Jonna, administrative wonder child in the office. She's coming up on a year with us now, and so delighted to have her out in the garden with me today, representing our Smart Pot Gardening Growing. We did some companion plantings earlier in the spring, and they actually did very, very well. And then all of a sudden, spring turned into summer overnight, and our spring veggies are started to cook. We want to get them out of the garden and into the kitchen where we can do some real cooking with them. And the first thing we're going to look at is this white Carpathian cabbage that we planted. We planted this really heavily. And we've used cabbage leaves throughout the season in stir fries and wraps. But we have a couple of nice heads here that are ready. This one in particular is ready to go. And Jonna agreed to come out and be our guest of honor and do the honors. So you go for it, girl. Okay. Okay, here she goes. Just go, get it. She's got her nice big blade and just gonna cut the whole stalk off because we're gonna take these cabbage out now. The leaves are getting tough. They're getting big and bulky and we wanna turn the soil over and plant something new. So here we go. Oh, you go, you take it, baby. That one's yours. Let's get a good look at it. I wanna see too. I wish I had a scale out here we could weigh it. But you know what we're gonna do is take these outer leaves off, maybe we'll have a little guess a number between one and 10 in the office to see who gets to take it home. Isn't that pretty? So I'm excited about that one. It's really nice. Let's drop that in there. Most of our beets that we planted in here, we have pulled as they were smaller and more tender and we used the beet leaves in our salads. So there's only a couple left in here, but they're still good. So we'll take those as well. And as I said, we will clean this pot out. I'll empty this soil. Loosen it up, lighten it up, add some nutrients, a little bit of compost, and then we'll get reorganized to plant in it again. So we'll continue on with these. Another combination that we planted were collards and onions, and those guys over here are really ready to go. The collards also are starting to get pretty tough. We'll probably take a few of these top little leaves off these collard greens have been great for us in soups and stews and salads and just as pan melted greens all pretty much all early spring and winter and our candy apple red onions are ready. Do you want to help me, Jonna? These we can just pull right up. I'm excited. I think that tonight maybe we might do turkey burgers on the grill. And I like red onions on my sandwiches and burgers better than white or yellow. So these are gonna be fun to have. Oof, oh, is that the last one? Great root development from our aerated Smart Pot Growing Container. So we'll toss those in our harvest basket. And we have one more container plant that we did as a combination. Do you remember our Peter Rabbit garden? Here it comes. So as you can see, our lettuce is gone. We've been picking away at this little lettuce for two, three months now, and it finally shot up its long head and flowered, so it's a goner. Our strawberries are still fine. And when I take the other spring greens out of here, these uh, onions and the carrots, I think I'm gonna go ahead and fill this container up with strawberries. Last year we did a milk carton with strawberries and they were just fantastic. And we've got lots of little baby offshoots that we can put into a container. So let's see what our red, oh, look at that one, John. I'm gonna That's let you cute. get that one. That's our biggest one. 
pretty much baseball size. That's okay. You know, these tops weren't dried, but they were falling off. And once they fall over like that, they're ready to go. So there's a beautiful red onion, a pretty big one. Here's a nice smaller one. And here's one. Ooh, that one's nice and purple. Pretty. Let's see. Aha. These are, oh, there's one more onion there. These are those red, it was a, let me read, because I sometimes I can forget. Red cord chantry carrots. That's right, they are. We could let these grow a little bit longer, but frankly, I'd rather utilize the space for something else. So let's go ahead and see what's in there for carrots. Right, That's yeah, always exciting. It's not bad. So these are true baby carrots. Sometimes the baby carrots you buy in the store are big carrots that get broken in harvesting and they trim them to a baby carrot size, like a little stub. But there are genetic carrots that are truly baby carrots. And these are some of those. Pull that one, Jana. I bet it's got a little. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, Peter Rabbit seriously. would be happy with that one. I think that just about does this for us. I'm going to clean this up. We had some hay in here and some straw to keep moisture in, and that's good. Starting to decompose through the warm weather. And I think what I'll do is just go ahead and fill in this container with strawberries. Give it some good nutrition, some nitrogen, and let us have a strawberry patch. Hey, hey, hey! Well, most favorite thing of mine to do with Smart Pots is growing potatoes. We grew three bags of num number 15 in forest green with handles. This spring, we did a couple of YouTubes. You can check back to see how we prepared our potatoes and planted them. They got big and lush and gorgeous. They bloomed. And now, as you can see, this one down here, I quit watering them. They're dry as pretty darn dry as a bone, and it's time to get them out of the ground. As they sit through the summer, the skins become thicker and nubbly and harder. And occasionally I've even had potatoes rot uh, that stayed in the ground too long. So first day of summer, if you can get your potatoes in the ground on St. Patrick's Day or before where you live, uh, it's time to go. And look what we've already got already. So we pulled out some of these nice Kennebunk whites. And what I do, I find really easy, is dump the bag in a wheelbarrow. Then the dirt is there, the soil is there for me to repurpose. And I don't have to dig with a shovel. It's easy work that way. And then I just sift through the soil and get my potatoes. So I'm gonna invite you to come in closer and we'll get down in here and get a few more and then we'll dump our last bag and show you the whole process. I think those are gonna be purple. So I'm real excited about that. I'm gonna sort some out here. The soil's nice and loose. Oh, and as you can see, it's pretty easy to just sift through and harvest these. I cannot wait to cook these. The skin is so tender and thin. You will never eat a fresher potato than this, no matter where you go. Okay, let's dump out our purple. I know there's a few more left in there, probably down at this end. I haven't sifted much. But let's go ahead and dump out our purple so you can see what that whole process is. These are the tops of the containers I already took out. And we'll just put those in the compost sack. And get our purple bag. Let's put that over there. I don't think it gets much easier than that. Oh, this is a red. This is the Pontiac red. So I'm gonna go ahead and sort through these. 
I hope you plant some potatoes this fall. You can get two crops a year almost everywhere. So I'm excited about reusing my bags. I'm gonna wash them just because potatoes can sometimes have a little bit of a virus that they can carry over. I'm gonna wash them. I'm gonna refresh this soil and use it for something else because you don't wanna grow them twice, uh, potatoes in the same soil two years in a row. Actually, I've done it as many as four, but you'll get diminishing returns. So just use this for something else. And look, I guess I got some reds and some purples in that bag. So again, happy Smart Gardening. We're so glad to have you here at the Smart Garden. And it is time to bring in the garlic. You can see we have let this go until it's really done. It's starting to blossom out on the top and set these little cloves, which actually tastes good sprinkled on a salad or on top of a soup or in a stir fry. And what we would like to do today is see what happened to our cloves underground. We're gonna pull these out so we can dry them and use them through the rest of the season. We're excited about it. This is a 24 inch raised round bed, one of our original products. It's a really nice size for container gardening. Got some root volume and some soil volume, but it's not terribly, terribly large. So it's good for a shallow rooted crop like onions, garlic, greens, and you can see also that we got a self-sprouted thing, a seed went awry, and I think this is a squash. We're gonna transplant it when we finish pulling up this garlic into a little number one transplanter. So that'll be two little things in one day. So I think we're gonna get ready, starting by scraping away some of the hay that we put on top of here, straw. And this is kind of interesting, some of this sprouted. So you can see the wheat kernels here. So this is straw from somebody's wheat field and there were some seeds left in there. So that's kind of pretty. I think I might cut that off and put it in a vase or something. So let's get in here and start clearing it off and see what we got. So I'm gonna pull this hay back and put it to the side because we'll put this into our compost sack. This is a nice addition for that. And we've only got, oh, half a dozen kernels. It's a little grass weed that popped up here. You can see I'm gonna remove the soil because this is still nice soil. It's gonna need some nutrients added, but the texture of the soil, the structure of the soil is awesome. And we'll even mix in a little bit of this leftover straw. Okay, let's get down to business here. Let's see what this garlic is looking like gardening you know it's kind of unpredictable well there's a nice small clove or head of garlic here's a little one these are nice I could throw these into a pot of boiling potatoes whole and then when they come out just mash it with the potatoes for a nice garlic mashed potatoes well goodness me there's more in here than I thought well these are lovely fresh homegrown garlic. We'll lay these out in the open air, just one level, probably put a little sheet of newspaper underneath them or two. Let them dry and harden off a little bit before we bring them inside. Now, I can tell that the nitrogen in this container is pretty depleted. Two reasons. One is, really our garlic didn't just go great guns. I would have liked to see bigger bulbs produced. But the other is this little self-seeded squash here is so pale green. And to me, that indicates a lack of nitrogen in the soil. So we're really gonna wanna refresh this well. Give it a good start in a transplanter. The reason I love these things is you can start your small vegetables and get a wonderful root production before moving them into something larger. Now you can see, gosh, this has a lovely root form structure already going here, right? But obviously it's just not getting the food it needs in this big container. So I'm gonna drop it right down in here. Settle those roots in. Come see us, guys! <laughs> Jojo and little dude. 
Little dude. Little dude. Jojo and little dude. Come and see us, guys. We're harvesting garlic. And there was a little volunteer squash in here. So we planted this up in a one gallon transplanter and gave it some mycorrhiza. And I'm also going to give it some fish food. Oh! So into this, I have put fish emulsion fertilizer. We're going to water this squash and give it an extra boost of nitrogen. The pups are going to go crazy. The, every animal loves the smell of fish food. That's for sure. Well, those are our gardening projects today. We hope you have a wonderful summer season just opening up. Make sure you like us. Watch us on YouTube. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, everywhere you could want a garden. Smart Pot's there for you. Happy gardening.